Kaiju no Kami here at Colorado Anime Fest 2023 with Kralika Kane. And we are here with Keith Silverstein. For people who might not know who you are, who are you and what have you done? Who am I? Who are you and what have you done? That sounds like very accusatory all the time. If you walk, <laughs> if you walk into anywhere and they go, who are you and what have you done? It's, it's usually a bad situation. Uh, so I, I, I'm a voice actor. I've been doing voiceover for uh, a little over 20 years now. Uh, I do a lot of uh, anime, a lot of video games. Do some original animation. Every once in a while, I get a commercial. Um, but that's kind of where I've been at, and uh, it's been a labor of love uh, for a long time now. So uh, it, it's been a really fun ride, and it continues to be so. Who are you? And what have you done <laughs> with my daughter? What? No, I. <laughs> Nothing. No. What did you hear? I don't even. Who's your daughter? So what was it like voicing both the savior of the world, Sailor Moon? And, or the, sorry, not the No, no, the keep going, no. <laughs> no, 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 please don't correct The me. father of the savior of the world, Sailor Moon, and the father of the destroyer of the world, Sailor Saturn. I liked the way you started the question much better. <laughs> and I'll answer that one. Um, it was a controversial casting choice for me to play Usagi, but um, I think it was the right way to go, you know, in this new age where anything goes, and rightfully so, uh, just some changes, we need to shake things up. Um, that was cool, but you know, I didn't know that at the start because I was playing Kenji, uh, you know, the Sailor Moon's dad, right off the bat. You know, that was what I was cast as for the Sailor Moon redub. And, uh, and I, I was honored just to be on that because Sailor Moon, like I've known anime forever now, I will be honest, Sailor Moon wasn't a show that I, I had seen a few episodes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't something I was like super into, but it is, it was, early on, it was one of the most iconic animes in the States. So if I went to a con back when nobody went to cons, which I did, there was always Sailor Moon stuff, like more so than really anything. When it was just like Sailor Moon, Fist of the North Star, there were only like a few animes that people kind of knew here at a certain mm -hmm. point and Sailor Moon was just huge. So I was really honored to work on that. It wasn't until a few seasons in when I auditioned for Tomoe and, uh, and that was a whole different beast. And I don't even know if it hit me in the beginning that I was, because I, I didn't realize I was another dad when I first auditioned for the character. I just knew he was just evil as sin and cackly and just super fun. And we had so much, so much fun with that character. Kenji kind of disappeared. <laughs> I, he just dis it, it was like Sailor Moon is like the predecessor to all those uh, live action Disney shows <laughs> where in the first three episodes they established yes these kids have parents and they're there mm -hmm. and then the stories then slowly don't evolve about the parents at all and they're like never mind I Carly you never see the parents again after like episode three you just know they must be there someone's paying the electric bills right <laughs> Okay, well, so that's what that's what happened with Sailor Moon. One would hope. One would. They're still able to get online, so <laughs> someone's paying those bills. And did you find yourself having to approach the characters differently when you moved on to Crystal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, when you when you're doing anime specifically, because it's already animated, it's not you're not you're not laying down the the voice and then they're animating to it. It's already there. Um, you're you're immediately seeing what it looks like. So, uh, Tomoe, for example, is so over the top in the original Sailor Moon. He oh. just is, and you can, you're, there's really no going too far with some of that animation. It's just so dark, and he like, goes like this as he's cackling. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. And uh, with Crystal, obviously the, the animation was very different. Uh, he's still over the, a little over the top, but not, not the same. And it wouldn't have fit for me to do the exact same thing. So I kept the basic vocal elements, and I kept the character elements. But I just didn't get as campy with it. I mean, obviously the first one's really. <laughs> I think that's. I think that's what makes the original Sailor Moon so good is how kind of campy it is to start. Certain things like JoJo and Sailor Moon are just kind of campy, and that's part <laughs> of their charm, at least in my opinion. Well, I have to say Absolutely. one of my favorite moments with Tomoe is when he makes the call to the Chinese restaurant. Okay. We had a lot of uh, outtakes. Oh. from that. <laughs> when you give me like no one's on the other line and I can do anything at all, I mean, I, I'm sure we did tons of stuff. I mean, I'm sure I ordered pizzas. <laughs> um, I'm sure I ordered a stripper. Like, I mean, oh, well, th these were clearly yes, outtakes. Yes, if yes. I get to goof around in the studio a little bit just for a second, I'm going to do it. Oh, absolutely. And so nobody gets to see those things. Although, I mean, there were a couple of things with Tomoe that ended up in the mix. I think there was something I said, I did like a, a long laugh and then there was a little bit of time left at the end and he was, of course, because he's so odd, he was doing it on a treadmill. Oh. And I, th I believe I said something like, note to self, you know, don't even laugh on a treadmill <laughs> as I'm trying to catch my breath. And I think they kept that in. Yes, And yes. then there was another one that I love that they kept in. Um, 
I went in and there was a, there was a scene where he talks about a song about a star that he heard in a disco. And in the original one, you're, where we were supposed to sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Um, and it was like literally like the day after David Bowie had passed away. And so I was just like on the first take, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. So I talked about a song about a star in a disco and then I sang Starman, but without making it like, it's like if you hear it, it's mm -hmm. wrong, but because I knew they wouldn't use it if I sang it right, because no one's going to pay for those rights. So, uh, so I sang a little bit of Starman and, uh, and then of course I did it the way it was supposed to be done and they kept the David Bowie one. So <laughs> oh, I was that like, so, cool. so that's in it, that's in it, yeah. Oh, that's a really awesome Easter egg because I remember, well, one, I remember when David Bowie passed because he's one yeah. of my favorite musicians um, and I'm only 25. <laughs> you have to like preface that. Yeah, I'm no, 23, no, 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 so no, no, I get it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> she's 27 plus shipping and handling. <laughs> but I never thought about that when hearing like the little Easter egg. So that is super, yeah. super awesome. Yeah, probably because the song barely sounds like it. But yes. if you know that and you and you, that's probably why they kept it because they're like, oh, it's a nice little tribute and it's not too obvious and it wasn't. It didn't need to be Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Oh, sure. I just picked another song with star in it that felt appropriate because that was in the forefront of my mind. So so now if you you know if you have that, go back and take a look at it and, and you'll see you'll be like, yeah, he is singing it wrong, but I, I get the intention now. So, Absolutely. Yeah. No, that's gonna be awesome. Now you've played a lot of different characters, many iconic characters that you've had the opportunity to do. Right. I try to only do iconic characters. Absolutely. It's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. Is the character going to be iconic? No? Well, I'm not even interested. <laughs> Fine, well, I'm going to stop talking to my fingers then. Bye. <laughs> but how, have you, how do you feel like you've evolved as an actor throughout the years? Oh, I know I have because I cringe when I listen to earlier stuff sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Um, trying to teach myself to remember everything is a moment in time uh -huh. and uh, you know it is what it is then and uh, maybe I couldn't even recreate that now anyway so so maybe that is a good thing that it's like that um, I don't know there's so many ways you do just in different ways you approach a character um, different options I know my voice has matured specifically mm -hmm. um, after you know 20 years of a lot of times I play higher pitch characters too but I do a lot of raspy characters, and I think you know after 20 years of doing a lot of low pitched and raspy characters, you know that I'm, I'm much more comfortable in the low. In fact, it's funny because I listen. I've heard some stuff where I was trying to do like a, a commander kind of a voice, kind of a thing like this, but like 15 years ago, and in my head. That's where it was. It was like, we're going in and we're going to do this and we're going to, and I listen back and it's like, we're going to go in and we're going to, and I'm like, oh my God, I thought I sounded so much deeper. I didn't so much, but I, did, I booked it, so whatever. So I don't know. Um, I, I, there's always stuff. I don't know if I can pinpoint what it is, but I, I try to learn from everything I do and try to approach each character a little differently if I can, even if they're similar sounding, you know what I mean? Because every character is going to be different. Have you enjoyed the journey? No, no, it's been painful. It's been very painful. Um, no, of course, I, um, my favorite thing about my career, about voiceover in general, uh, and you could say this for a lot of acting too, but I think it's more so in voiceover than on camera stuff, is that you, you don't know where the journey is going to lead you. You couldn't possibly plan it out. I mean, if you're an on-camera actor, you have a certain look. Sure. So you can say, I'm probably going to play the hero, the heartthrob, the, or I'm going to be the, the villain, or I'm going to be the, the old this or the that. And, and it, it's not like that with voiceover, because whatever your voice is capable of, you can play. So you can play all these different characters. But you don't know what's going to be huge, what's going to affect the world, like when people, if ever, uh, you're going to get like, a, are you going to be in a number one game? Are you gonna, is it going to be games? Is it going to be commercials? Maybe you get in like, I can't, I'm going to be huge in video games, and you just can't book video games but you're like in every commercial, which is not a bad thing at all. <laughs> but I'm just saying you can't really plot out your career. Oh, absolutely. You can push in different directions that you want to do, but maybe that's not it. Maybe you're just going to always play the villain, just always be the hero, or, uh, or, be, or be like the leading audiobook reader in the world. <laughs> do you know? And they're all great. They're all, these are all respected you know, careers, paths to take, but uh, you're not in charge of them. You kind of let the the casting directors do their thing and, uh, and you just enjoy the ride. Have you found yourself being a little bit more picky on roles you take because you're a father? Do you want to get like roles that you only that your kids could watch? Hell no! <laughs> no, 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 I've never even considered that. Um, uh, I don't, there hasn't been a lot offered to me that I was, I'm trying to think of an example of something that's like, oh, I wouldn't do that. I mean, I, you know, as, as a gamer and stuff, I played things like Grand Theft Auto, so I mean, I, 
there's stuff like that that I have out there, you know what I mean? Um, so I don't, there's not a lot of things that I would really, uh, if I'm gonna turn something down, it's gonna be because of time, if anything. Uh, I don't think most voice actors have a lot of freedom to be picky. Sure. Um, it's not the same as, you know, uh, being an A-lister that brings in a certain amount, you know, 300 million people to see this. You know, they know who's going to come in to see this movie if, you know, so-and-so is in it. Um, we don't do that. We don't have that. So we can't just be like, okay, I can pick one or two movies a year and make millions. And, you know, we just kind of keep working. And yeah. I, feel, I think for most of us, I'm sure there's a few exceptions that can be like, nope, nope, nope. Um, but we do try to keep busy. I mean, if something politically rubs me the wrong way or something, a commercial or something, that's something I would turn down. I wouldn't do an ad for like getting kids to smoke or something. You know what I mean? Like there are things I would, but those don't get offered. I don't even think they do those kind of ads. No, not But I'm just saying there are things I would turn down, but I, it's never been like, ah, uh, that's a little too. Yeah, it's not like the Flintstones anymore with the cigarette commercials. Oh yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. It's an interesting point, I remember that though. Well, it just proves once again we're old. But, um, <laughs> Well, we're old. we're old, not me. I'm old. Of course, not me. I'm excluded from age completely. I look just like I did when I was 12. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we, our channel really works um, not strictly just with kids, but mm -hmm. as, um, as Kaji Okami is a teacher, we mm -hmm. try to always inspire kids to be creative right. and to try new things. and. Is there any words of wisdom that you would give to someone who is not necessarily thinking about being a voice actor, but just right, right. in a creative essence? Like, what would you say to help them feel more comfortable to take that leap? Well, listen, you've got to follow your, your heart and uh, wherever your creativity is going to take you. I mean, I think one of the greatest things that, that we're able to do is to create, and I mean that in any sense. Absolutely. Whether that's drawing, painting, or music, sculpting, acting, it doesn't really matter. Um, if you have that creative bug in you, you've got to let it out somehow. Um, and that's whether it's for a career or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can just be like, I'm going to be an attorney, but I also, you know, I'm an amazing sculptor and I like to do that on the side. Um, but never be afraid to do what you love. Um, everybody brings, especially in acting, everybody brings something different to the mix. So no matter, even if you take two actors that you like with voiceover, these two sound kind of similar. Sure. You give them the same role, you're always going to get different results. You know, if you kept them separate and you had them both recorded, it's just, we all bring something different. So whatever it is that makes you, you, and makes you unique, which are those choices, don't second guess them too much. Don't try to be too much like someone. You can be inspired by other actors you hear, but uh, don't try to emulate or copy them too much. It's okay to, to do it a little to learn how did they do it, so you know you're capable of that as well. But put your own spin on everything and let everyone come around to you. Uh, I think that's much more rewarding than just trying to sound the way, which we all do a little bit, you know, oh, we're supposed to sound like this, I'm supposed to sound like, you gotta do a bit of that, but um, but you'll have your own twist and don't be afraid of that. Don't think, ah, that's different, that's wrong, nobody does it that way, like just just go for it. Um, and, and have the other stuff in your back pocket, so if you need to, if you get redirected, fine, then go with the standard, whatever you're gonna do, but but take that original choice, go for it, be, be something special and different, and hopefully uh, that'll work for you. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Any social media links that people can find you at? Ah, uh, sure. Uh, I'm at uh, uh, at Silver Talkie on Twitter. Come and find me there. I think I'm I'm Keith, I think I'm just Keith Silverstein on Instagram. I'm pretty easy to find. I'm I think I'm just Keith Silverstein on uh, TikTok. Um, you know, and I, I post things every now and then. Uh, sometimes it's great, and sometimes I go a couple of weeks because I get busy and I don't. I'm not. I don't know how people do that. Like no. four things a day. I'm like, well, don't you? But you work, and you do work. How do you do that too? I don't know if it's because I have kids. I have no idea. But um, but yeah, no. Uh, come uh, come say hi on any of those uh, sites. I like to respond to people when I can, and uh, and uh, that's where you can find out what. Uh, and as soon as I can announce anything, boom, it's on there. Whether it's a con appearance or it's a role, so that's how to keep track. How to follow, how to stalk me. That's how to stalk me. <laughs> that's, that's what you want to do. And that level of stalking is okay with me. Well, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should yeah, totally. put that boundary out there. Get yeah, any further than that. If you're searching for my address and that kind of stuff, then forget it. That's a different thing. <laughs> any final words for our viewers? It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. Well, that's good. No, I don't know what that means at all. People are like, what does that mean? What is that? I have no idea. Uh, I hope today, too, shall be prosperous. There you go. Well, thank you so much oh, for your thanks. time. Thanks for having me. Thank Until so next much. time, bye. Oh, is this what we do?